Hey folks, time for another Q&A, horse, voice, and all. You got a couple of great questions on DACA today, so we're gonna try to bang through them as quickly as we can. Of course, these are all related to Earth's disaster cycle, the magnetic pole shift, solar micronova, the galactic current sheet, things like that. In fact, that's where we're gonna start. The question is, are there flux tubes in the galactic current sheet and what do they do? Now, these would be the things you see on the endless spiral, the black and white hashed lines. These are the magnetic portals, as NASA calls them, that directly exchange plasma between the Earth and Sun in the solar system. And the question is, if we're scaling that up to the galaxy, does the galaxy have these as well? And the answer is yes, they absolutely do. They are a prime feature of these current sheets. Now, what they do, that's an interesting one. This could be the kind of thing where it's an 11 year back and forth. This could actually be the major trigger of the 11 year sunspot cycle. Um, there's nothing about the nuclear furnace model of the sun that allows it to have an 11 year cycle like this. And given the fact that on earth, it's every eight minutes, uh, it's something like 45 or 46 minutes, uh, the flux tubes for Jupiter, very possible that we get um, this and this is what triggers the sunspot cycle. However, I think it is equally likely that this is one of the things that actually helps to disrupt the sun slash ignite the micronova when we're actually inside of the current sheet. When we're above or below the current sheet, north or south of it, we don't have as much exposure to these magnetic flux tubes. On Earth, we know that the main impact from them, even though we do get flux transfers back and forth every eight minutes, the major impacts from them happen when we are actually taking the current sheet of the sun. And so in terms of exchanging plasma and electric material between the sun and the center of the galaxy, you have some really good ways to both disrupt the electrical activity, uh, make it dim, make it change color, and actually allow that material to accumulate. But you also have the ability to dump material in at, from an electrical standpoint and actually create that reignition, the thing that actually blows off the micronova shell. And so that was a fantastic question. And luckily we can use a lot of the science that we have right here at the solar system level uh, in terms of better understanding that. Here's an interesting question. Will rainwater be safe to drink after the disaster? And I do highly recommend rainwater collection, um, but this is an issue because there should be a lot of volcanic activity uh, in this disaster. And so you do have that pollution uh, perspective on the rain. First of all, if you have a mountain spring where the water's actually coming out of a mountain or something like that, it's gonna be pretty well purified. But in your preparatory items, whether you're getting your water from rain collection or out of a stream or something, I do recommend water purification. There are filters for this. There are even purification tablets that can work for this, although the tablets are more for uh, the kinds of contaminants like bacteria, fungi, things like that, not so much for the, the, the chemical pollution. But just having a, a simple filter system absolutely can work. And if you have a couple of them, uh, that's going to last you a lot longer than um, the volcanic pollution of the rain is going to last, put it that way. Next question, are canned foods at risk? And this, of course, is a question that is due to the solar induction, the fact that we're going to have phenomenal electric currents going through everything. This is one I can't tell you definitively yes or no, but your canned food, in theory, is absolutely at risk of arcing, melting, things like that. Now, optimally, you would use glass containers with the rubber airtight gaskets. Um, I know not everybody can pull that off. That is why you want to, if possible, have your canned foods, if that's the route you're going, in something like the plastic tub I talked about. If you're building the Faraday cage, your canned goods aren't a terrible idea to store them in there as well. And so um, uh, this one is not as certain. Can't tell you for certain that they are going to be arcing or melting, but they're certainly more at risk than say uh, your pile of firewood, put it that way. Um, this is a repeat one. People still asking about Yellowstone all the time. First of all, 
Those people have not watched the playlist and seen the five or six times we've talked about Yellowstone, but I'll mention it again here. No, Yellowstone is broken. There is no other volcano in the world, super volcano or otherwise, that can boast its pressure release. It has geysers, it has seismic activity, it has geothermal release, it has no way to actually build up pressure. The moment pressure gets built up beneath there, it just blows it out. Now, it is an effusive eruption risk, effusive being like what Hawaii does, where it just kind of bubbles up and comes out, but it's not the explosive risk like what took out Woody Harrelson in the movie 2012. Again, all of that is in the playlist below the video. Last question for today, and then I'm going to save my voice as much as humanly possible. Will solar power systems work in the aftermath of disaster? Well, there's two aspects to that. One, if it is connected and actually operating, very good chance it's going to be taken out. In fact, uh, you can probably find this if you do some internet searching. Amazon is actually taking the solar panels off of the roofs of their facilities because they kept catching fire. And if you go and you look at the dates of those, they were all during solar storms. And Veteran observers know we haven't had any major solar storms. These were all in minor events, kind of like the pink aurora that shouldn't have happened with such a minor solar wind stream the other day. Um, if it is disconnected, if it is in a Faraday cage, if it is in storage or something, it is possible it could survive the initial CME that would otherwise take out global power. It's possible it won't. In the solar micronova, no. These things are not going to make it. Um, I can't imagine any amount of Faraday or plastic or insulative protection that would actually um, protect something like that unless you've literally got all the components taken apart and you basically plan to build the solar system from scratch in the aftermath. Um, if you have the chops and skills to do that, more power to you. But again, I'm still not sure it's going to work. Anyway, we're going to save the voice here for tomorrow morning's news and I will see you there right here. Be safe, everyone.